During the next 35 minutes, we would like to give you a brief introduction of our ongoing research project, the Digital Pina Bausch Archive. To start with, I would like to present you a quick overview about the organization of the physical Pina Bausch Archive. So, what kind of material did we find? Pina Bausch was an archivist herself. She collected many different kinds of material and media types which were necessary for her to restage and reconstruct her pieces on stage, mostly collected chronologically and piece by piece, gathered in the archives of her private apartment and the offices of the Tanztheater Wuppertal. The collection includes various production materials, for example, videos, which you also saw, in different formats and genres beginning in the early 70s, manuscripts and personal notes, photos, slides and negatives from various kinds of occasion, for example, performances, rehearsals, social events, photos of the research periods of the company all over the world, festivals, etc. Production materials of the work, including some of her early works. Furthermore, workbooks about different phases of the production, choreographical and technical notes like show bibles, technical cue sheets, stage management cue sheets, dance notes, etc. Furthermore, newspaper clippings starting in the late 50s and also uh, or her early career as a dancer, also paper clippings of her work with Cordios, the time when she was in New York at Juilliard, posters and programs of the time with the Folkwang Ballet, and later, for sure, as, uh, as, as the artistic director of the Tanztheater Wuppertal, different libraries of music, books, and magazines, physical objects like awards, medals, certificates, personal correspondences, administrative files, even documentation of sets, costumes, and props. These different types of media, available for more than 50 production, productions, give you an impression of the heterogeneity of the Pina Bausch archive, an archive which not only includes all the work produced in Wuppertal, but also the time before, meaning more than 40 years of artistic work. So this comes to the question, what this, all these different materials, what are exactly, exactly the needs and technical requirements for a database of the physical of the Pina Bausch archive. And maybe Salomon, um, maybe you would like to talk a bit about the challenges and the process of setting up this digital, digital database. Thank you. Yes, indeed, what we want to uh, explain to you today is our work on this digital database, um, which we did for the last couple of years already. Um, this, but this work is still in progress, and so what we can provide today is just an insight into our kitchen somehow, just to give you a brief idea of where, where, we, are, where we want to go with this. Starting point, of course, was the existing archive, which Mark just mentioned, and the main purpose of this archive, this existing archive, was production. The, the pieces of Tanztheater Wuppertal, the big repertoire, wouldn't be alive anymore without the help of this archive. This material we, we found um, is highly precise and was very well organized, as Mark just mentioned. Um, but all these materials were generated by so many different people from different departments of Tanztheater um, over from with many different points of view over 40 years, so the material is very heterogeneous. And everybody involved in this had his own perspective and focus and his own um, experience and knowledge about the work, and yet everything came together on stage every night. So things were functioning together, but from, with many participants from different points of view. 
and also the pieces themselves that changed over the years. So there is a big variety of information and sometimes also contradictory information. So this is something we have to deal with somehow. But this has always been the case and it has always been part of the work of Tanztheater to deal with this and we do not want to change this at all. And anyway, the only person who could, who would have the authority to change, to make, make decisions in this sense is not with us anymore. So anyway, as these pieces of Tanztheater are so difficult to capture anyway, we don't see this as a problem really. We, we even see it as a big, uh, big uh, advantage and I think it's extremely important and valuable to keep all these different perspectives, to keep them and not to, to mix everything up and to have one uh, perspective. But this, of course, is something which is not easy to deal with for a database. Another challenge was that this archive was very systematic, but at the same time, there was no, uh, we, we were not able to describe this the system or the structure a priori. And that's why um, we, we had to deal with this in our digital database project too. Although it was part of the daily routine of Tanztheater Wuppertal, um, to deal with this material, there is no fixed formulation of, uh, of the structure or a system. If there is, if, if we can even find it, I don't know. Um, and the, the problem somehow is that conventional databases just love structure and most digital, uh, all uh, conventional databases just cannot live without a structure given in advance. So, so thinking about this, we, we asked ourselves, would we have to go through the whole material and do research on this possible structure in it uh, before we could even start working on a digital database, long before we could even start to um, put in data into this database. And we talked to many people about this and we were told again and again, uh, yes, uh, that's very nice, but you need a structure for your database in advance. That's how it functions, that's it. But we couldn't believe this. We did not want to believe this somehow. And um, so, and my idea was more like something like a jungle where uh, everything grows together organically and um, and still we could draw passes through this jungle, but if, if these passes uh, turn out as not to be good, they, just, they don't stay forever, but new passes can be found. And even everybody could find his or her own pass through this material. So, um, and we hoped with, this, with something like this it would be we would be freer to express we, what we want to say and somehow everything, func everything functions a little bit wilder, freer, but more precise because this is what, we, what is the main purpose we need this for, to really be p precise and not to, not to put things into boxes where they don't belong. So, um, luckily, when we had um, a talk with uh, a conversation with, pe with people from the Foresight Company uh, about a possible joint project, we met people from the University of Applied Science in Darmstadt, and they told us that there is a technique which we could do research on just to, for this purpose. And we did, we did research, and. I'm very happy to have Bernhard Tull here with us because he's really the expert in this technology and um, he will tell us more about this, the, the approach um, we found. Um, but 
But the key to our archive is the knowledge of, of the people of, from Tanztheater Wuppertal who do everyday work with this material since many years already. And that's why I would like you, Barbara, to tell us more now from your perspective as a, as a dancer, but also as a, a rehearsal assistant, but also as our colleague in the work on the archive. Okay, okay, thank you. So I'm coming from another totally different perspective from the, from the movement. <laughs> and uh, to me, uh, we're joining this project of uh, the archive, working in the archive is like stepping into unknown territory. And uh, I really discovered, you call it a jungle, I would call it a universe. <laughs> to me, I have this image. To, uh, to really, uh, through the exchange that we started to have um, about knowledge and different perspectives and uh, observation and explora um, exploration, to really start to see there is so much to grasp. How can we do that? And uh, yeah, many questions came up. And for me also, like, how can we really grasp this complex and very dynamic matter? and also in many parts very uh, transient matter, things that you cannot write down or have on a video, things that are in between the lines. How can we, how can we get sort of hold of that? And without distorting it, without distortion, without uh, interpretation, without, uh, let's say, inadequate judgment about things, just show what is there. And uh, yeah, to me it was the idea like we cannot put the bird in the cage. We have to keep a freedom and yet be very, get very precise and get hold of things. So it's very familiar to the work because Pina's pieces are fed by the very subjective input of the, of the dancers and, and of course other associates. Um, and, but the input by the dancers uh, coming from her questions. And then she's the one who, who, who sort of could, all, could it bring all together with her incredible artist, artistic skill and, and vision to make the piece, which opens up again to, to the audience and there's a freedom of, of perception for everybody. And we should not, we, we don't want to limit that or distort it in any way. So that is a big, it's a big dynamic process of uh, creation and, pro and performing also. Yeah, that was for me the, it's the big exciting part of it. Uh, and uh, having danced for, uh, by now for 25 years in the company and also doing a lot of rehearsal assistant work, I uh, can also s talk a little bit about the needs, we, what we need in the actual rehearsal moment. We need what I would call the external memory, which would be uh, videos, written things, uh, also maybe things what, what that are told, but like the external material. And then there's also the internal memory, which every dancer who has their own experience with the work carries in themselves. And these two, very simply said, have to fuse in the work, in the rehearsal, uh, of a reproduction, for example. And um, yeah, these two things have to come together and they need support from many, many different sources of information. So a database system which can help us to get hold at one moment or in a very short time, hold of very many different informations is, would be very, very helpful for us in the actual work. So that is one, one aspect. Like for example, a video is a video of a performance. A video recording is just, it's one performance which has been corrected and, and thought over the next day and for the next performance. So it's not something absolute. And also a video can not really transmit the sensation of the performance itself. So there is something it's just, it can, just can be a part, an integral part of something. And uh, so there's the need for simultaneous depiction of 
many, many informations. Um, Another point would be uh, the, I, when, when I started working for the archives was uh, the viewing of the performance videos. And uh, yeah, one day actually Pina said, uh, have a look, was schön ist, which means what? <laughs> uh, to me, it means to have a really uh, profound and concentrated uh, look and observation of the material. And uh, one one experience was very interesting because I was watching the the videos from Dan Son, the piece Dan Son, and she came in and she she looked at the screen and she said, um, "Oh, there's something missing." And I, and that that made me understand again, like, okay, this is not we cannot get hold on one thing which is the right thing. It's all it's all contribution to this. Uh, let's say a uh, newly creation process with what is there. So it needs to be in the moment newly created but reproducible from what is there, what the piece is, because it is totally elaborate, it's totally precise, it's totally detailed. And we have to capture that. And um, yeah, and also to make choices of. Uh, yeah, which which material we can what we can use for which situation to make a choice without overlooking things, without excluding things. Um, therefore, um, the video annotation system, which can provide many many different informations, also at the same time in this and next to each other, basically, is also very helpful for us would be very helpful for us. Um, another point would be, or my last point would be, um, that another moment was there which we understood we were, we were uh, doing the reproduction of Comtanz mit mir, an old piece, and uh, one of the dancers found a little crinkled piece of paper in one of the costumes and it was an old note from, from one of the original cast, members of the original cast, with some very interesting little, little information about uh, a scene or, or, or a moment in this piece. And Pina considered this, this piece of paper is very relevant. And you say, we have to keep this. This is a little treasure. And this, again, made me understand we have to, we have to, to collect all the things that we can find and find, this, find a way to, to display them and to get hold of them so we can use them for the things that are really happening in the moment and are newly created. And yeah, that actually asks for um, rather unconventional solutions and that is something you can introduce here. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> um, okay. Perhaps to start with, um, information architecture is uh, the art and the science to structure large volumes of information and data so that users can find the information they need in a certain information. And thanks God, I'm not the only expert. There are many more <laughs> uh, who can do this job, and that's my profession. So when I joined the, the project, um, I was confronted with a rather complex situation with, with a company who would like to develop a digital archive based on already given material, a collection of various materials and media types, uh, very, very inhomogeneous, heterogeneous material. Uh, furthermore, the digital archive should keep the company members' memories of the work of Pina Bausch alive. Um, and it should give, uh, in the future, a possibility to link it with other archives. Um, as Salomon already um, stated, there were, they had great difficulties to define a conventional database model. And even worse, in, in our first discussions, I learned that the team had no clear idea and no consistent idea what to capture at all and how to capture it. So, um, how to develop software based on these requirements? Um, 
The, the archive should combine local and distributed knowledge to a consistent view. It should allow for dynamic development. No a priori data models um, are possible to define. It should keep contradictions, even on the level of facts. Um, for instance, if one person states that the, the first um, performance of a piece had been on May 2nd and the other person stated it had been on May 3rd, then these two facts should be kept in the archive as long as it's not clear which of the two is the truth. And, of course, it should allow for connectivity with other archives in the future. So this has been the requirements and my proposal, and that's why I joined the project, or uh, I've been called to join the project, my proposal was to, to use so-called linked data. This is a standard of the uh, w, uh, of the World Wide Web Consortium, so it's a web-based standard to represent data. Um, and as you can see in the first example, uh, data are expressed as so-called triples, um, consisting of a subject and a predicate and an object. And it's meant, this is the hypothesis, it's meant to be a statement, like in natural languages, like a simple sentence. And the idea is that with this kind of statements, you could express every kind of fact. So, for instance, um, on, on the right side, you could find uh, that there is a piece done so on, uh, and the creator is Pina Bausch, and it has been created in 95. Two facts stated with this kind of trebles. So, the, the basic idea is to capture the data as they come along, and to model perspectives later as needed. There is no a priori modeling needed. You just keep going, capturing data, collecting data, and later you start developing perspective as you need them. So here are a few examples. Um, the piece Danzon, created by Pina Bausch. It has a title, Danzon, um, and it, it has a description, a Stück von Pina Bausch, and this way we could just model every piece uh, or describe every piece. Um, persons like, of course, Pina Bausch as being a female and a dancer, or Mechtel Großmann um, with her names, which are used in the documentation within the archive um, as an example. Um, this is an example of a photograph um, which has a certain title, which has been um, taken by Martin van den Abele, I hope I spelled the name in the right way. Um, and this photograph depicts Pina Bausch. Okay, it can be seen on the photograph that she is dancing uh, with a fish. Um, this is an example of a manuscript or a page within the manuscript. Um, this page describes a certain scene, and we could even more state about this scene that the scene is part of Danzon, and this scene has a title like Frühling, Mädchen, Duschen. Okay? Um, just two more examples. Um, this is Ismail Dia. He um, analyzes uh, video recordings of performances, and he identifies on these video recordings certain scenes. And he uh, documents the time codes, the start and the end time code of scenes. And of course, we could also model these clips, video clips, showing certain scenes um, within a certain video type. So that way we're collecting data. Last example, costumes. Uh, so this is an example of a costume um, worn by Mechtel Großmann and has been used in certain performances, could be just collected like that. Um, Please note that all these examples um, have been described from a very local perspective. We are just talking about these items, like a costume, a clip, a photograph, a person, and that's it. We are not talking about the archive as a whole. There is no need to know all about the archive. Everybody just looks at his or her own data items and describes these data items. All what's needed is a certain common vocabulary like depiction or uh, creator or created and things like that. Now, the data store um, 
just adds all this to one net of data. So within the store, it looks like this. So it starts being cardic, okay? Um, nevertheless, if you look into this data, there are still some inconsistencies. Let's look at this example. Uh, we, had a we had a picture, a photograph, and we stated that on this photograph, you could see Pina Bosch, okay? And then we had a description of Danzon, the piece, and we stated that this piece has been created by Pina Bausch. Nevertheless, looking on the data of Pina Bausch, we couldn't find that she is uh, depicted on a photograph or that she has created a certain piece. Though there are missing links. And the technology we are using allows to close these missing links by logical inferences. So we give the store some logical inferences, like for instance, if a photograph depicts a person, then vice versa, this person is depicted by this photograph, or if a work has been created by a person, then the person created this work. The store is able to close inconsistent links by itself. Okay? In the end, it's even more chaotic. <laughs> okay. The black lines um, depict or show uh, those links we entered manually, and the red lines show those links which are added by the store itself to close inconsistent links within the data. But now, if we look at certain data nodes, for instance, Pina Bausch, we are getting a whole picture. So black lines, that's what we stated. She's a dancer, uh, she has a name and things like that. But furthermore, we can see that she danced in certain performances, which we didn't enter into the store, but the store itself entered the links. And she can be found or she can be seen on certain photographs. Or, for instance, Danzon now has certain performances, or for instance, as an example, there is a certain scene within Danzon, scene 23. Looking at that scene, we can find that this scene is described in the manuscript, and even more, that this scene can be seen in certain clips on a video. And this has been linked by the store itself based on the data we gave into the store. And this works already. Okay, sorry. So how we fulfill the requirements given, we combine local and distributed knowledge um, to a consistent view. We, do, we don't do this, it's the store who does it by adding links. Um, we don't need perspective a priori, we just develop them afterwards based on the data given. We can keep contradictions because we keep track of the authors of data and we allow for connectivity in the future because we use a web-based standard and we keep the principles of open linked data. So what we modeled so far, I, I will not read all these modeled objects, but that's what we modeled already so far in the project. There are a few things work in progress and there are some left, which we will have till end of the year. So this will be the universe of different objects within our um, archive within that project. Um, so this is how it looks like now. Okay, um, a net of data. Uh, these are only 50,000 links, which is not too much. There are much, much more links or many more links in the archive, but it's just one, I think, neat visualization of the data net. Let's have two looks into the visualization. So this is a node for pieces. All the pieces are in the net, and then if we move to Danzon, that's the information we will find on Danzon. Of course, it's not feasible to work this way with the data. It's clear. Therefore, we use a browser uh, tool, which is web-based, to inspect the data. And for instance, the costume, which I mentioned in the example, looks in our inspection tool, browser-based inspection tool like this. And with the help of this browser tool, we can just follow the links and inspect the whole data cloud or the, the net of data uh, which we find. Now, 
there is one perspective we have at the moment. We adopt a librarian perspective, which means that every object of the archive finds its place, and we can find every object very easily again. Okay? And to do this, we use the function requirements of bibliographic records, the Ferber model. So for those among you who knows a bit, the, F, the Ferber model is one of the world standards for bibliographic records. That's what we use at the moment. But we can add more perspective as needed um, in future. So that's a technical um, slide for those um, um, in the audience who know about linked data. Uh, so we are using standards to be uh, future-proof. Uh, and there are a few tools we are developing. For instance, we are developing the Pina Bausch Archive Ontology, uh, which complements given standard ontologies. And we are using or developing a tool to inspect the data. That's what we are doing. OK, that's my student team working on it. I'm not doing it alone. I've got 10 or more students working with me, which I will, would like to thank at this, at this place uh, for the help they do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so what I think, I think the, uh, it's like a universe now. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a universe. Yes. <laughs> um, I think this flexibility, which this approach gives us, is very important. Not only because we didn't know how to start when we started, uh, but also for the future. Because I'm sure that we, how long, we, uh, 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 how good we would um, have thought about it uh, before, we would realize in several years that we would like to change things. And this is something we can now very easily do. And this flexibility gives us, is very important in many, many aspects. Um, we can develop very different tools in the future to deal with this groundwork of data which we are working on now. Very specialized tools, but also very generic tools, like for different users also, for children, for dancers, for, um, for light technicians, whatever. We could develop whatever tool we would like, and this is very flexible, and very, we could take care of every perspective we want to take care about. And it's also very important because we have the idea of a, a living archive in the future, and uh, we don't know we cannot anticipate what this is going to be. And so uh, always it can be, there can be different approaches to the material, different questions. There are so, I think, questions will change within the years. And when we, uh, for example, if we go to other parts of the world, other people will have different questions than we can think about now and here. And also new forms can be created with this, like how can we use this again to bring it back into into space, into into reality, back into the art? How comes art back into to this uh, data which we have here? And of course, this uh, connectivity which Bernhard mentioned is also very important. So it's very easy compared to other databases to connect this uh, this archive to other archives or other institutions uh, worldwide. And so I see this as a basic work for future projects on this. And yes, so I'm very glad that we found we have this approach now. And there's still a lot of work to do. Not so much anymore at this point for, for the, uh, the uh, University of Applied Science in Darmstadt, but also for us to enter data. This will take a lot of time still. Uh, but then w once we have done this groundwork, I think this is very very, very flexible and very, very helpful and can help to in anything like uh, an open a public archive, but also for the production archive, which what was the basis and which will be uh, a main subject of our archive in the future, too. So, um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this lecture demonstration. We have a little time for a few questions. Please, could you make a little bit more light that I can see people who are asking? Ah, yes, please. And we have a microphone. Yeah. 
It is coming. How do you deal with the problem of copyright? How open is this archive for everybody to use? Can you only look? Can you use it in a more practical way? Because this is always the big question behind all this. Um, right now it's closed, simply. Um, because we, yeah, it's so time consuming to, to deal with people working in the archive. So this year we, we decided to close the archive. But afterwards, of course, we want to open it again. Um, and of course, there is this question of copyright, and we we are working on like collecting the the, the rights we need. We have, the, I think we we do have the most important rights we need, but we don't. We are working on everything else. Um, but I think we won't give access to everything over the internet, but on physical locations, and but not only in Wuppertal, which is planned to be the the center somehow of what uh, of the archive, but also on uh, several places all over the world. But this is still something we have to to work on. We did already work on this, but it's still a way to go. So, but the copyright question is is a big issue for every archive, and of course for us too. Sort of a technical question for uh, Professor Tool. Uh, I saw that one of your tools, uh, you have developed an ontology, a Pina Baus archive ontology. Um, I want to ask if this is open source, if it can be used by other projects for a description of other dance archives. Um, at the moment, it's an, just an internal ontology because we use it within the project. But of course, if the archive should be linked with other archives, it is necessary to distribute this ontology. Um, that is answer number one. So it, it must be open in order to link with other archives. And number two, uh, this ontology is not that big. The, the main part of the modeling takes place in the Ferber model. So the, the FRBR, the functional requirements, they model the skeleton of the of the data model, and the Pina Bausch um, archive ontology is an add-on which just model the idiosyncrasies and some details of the data which are not coped with in the Ferber model, of course. So if you would learn more about the modeling of the skeleton itself, so it's the Ferber model which is uh, open, accessible. Just one more, to your knowledge, is there other, are there other ontologies regarding dance, or do you think this is the first attempt? Uh, no, there are others, um, which I couldn't just list here, but there are others, and we are <coughs> going to we are going to reflect uh, and, and, and compare the other ontologies with our ontology in order to allow for maximum connectivity. The, the common the, the common understanding is that in the long run, we would like to have one ontology for performance arts archives, okay? And not everybody does his own. So it's important, now in the, in the last phase of the project, it's important to just compare and look where we could go into the mainstream and where we need the differences, okay? And that's the next step ahead, right? How do you integrate the memories and the knowledge of the dancers? How do these memories become data? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, should I start? I mean, what we did all the time was like from the beginning of this project, and this is just a little step, was like that we worked with oral history. Oral history, oral history so that we were asking questions to the dancers and trying to, to get access to particular um, ways or particular knowledge which we haven't documented. But for sure it's also one, one step in this whole thing. But what we were also thinking was to really to think about, in the context of our history, to think about very playful kind of programs or projects to really um, find different ways of, of 
maybe memory which hasn't been really fixed. So this is one little attempt. We give one last question. I just Margaret want to add Bischoff. something. Sorry? I would like to add something yeah, yeah. to this, or, and Barbara too. You go. No, I, w I was just saying, I mean, it is actually happen it's happening in the actual work, in the rehearsal process. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, just shortly, it is happening. This is what happens between people in actual work situations. Yeah. And I would like to, to add also that this could be uh, one feature of tools we could develop in the future that people can use, uh, put in their own knowledge and experience about the pieces. Not only the, the, the experts from Tanztheater, but also uh, the user, every user or every um, the public can, can like contribute something to this and make it richer and bigger and like more to, to draw new new interesting uh, lines in this. Vielen, vielen Dank für Ihre Präsentation. Mich interessiert etwas zur Organisation. Wir sehen jetzt vier Personen, welche das Archiv vertreten. Wir haben aber gehört, dass eine Menge, Menge Arbeit zu tun ist, bis das funktioniert. Wie verteilen Sie das? Oder haben Sie einen Stab hinter sich? Oder wie bewerkstelligen Sie das? Ähm, vielleicht nur ganz kurz, also einerseits äh, sind wir im Rahmen, das war vorher auf der Folie, da ist auch zu sehen, wir, wir haben gerade ein großes Archivprojekt, was äh, gefördert wird durch die Kulturstiftung, Kulturstiftung des Bundes, durch äh, das Land Nordrhein-Westfalen und durch die Dr. Werner Jagstedt Stiftung und dadurch, äh, das ist wirklich nur ein kleiner Ausschnitt, ich spreche jetzt Deutsch, ne? <lacht> I'm sorry, <lacht> this is only a very, this is, a, um, this is only a very small example of what we're doing, but everything comes together here in this database. So um, uh, we have resources of people like working for the foundation on this archive. We are like, it's a big team already now, and we have the big, we are lucky to have uh, Tanztheater Wuppertal uh, working very closely together with us. For example, Mark is working with the foundation very closely, but he is a member of Tanztheater Wuppertal and of course also Barbara is. And there are several other like Benedikt Billet who is working very closely with us. But everybody in Tanztheater like helps and in, is involved to, to, to make this archive happen. But we have also external experts from, from uh, the BAM uh, archive in, in New York, which is very, very important for us. And of course in, uh, in Darmstadt, there are many people working on this project, students, professors, uh, employees, just so very briefly. And maybe to just add to that, um, if you want to see them, we have the, our report, like yes. the, the working report. We have one for the last year and one for this year, and there you can even see them. And you can get and this for where we can hand it out later on for everybody who is interested, and so to get a, a bigger idea of what we're doing.